Hey there, and welcome to another episode of your favorite libertarian. Today we are going to be dispelling the myths around the ruling that was released from the ATF's office about braces. We're going to be dispelling two myths uh, specifically around the free tax stamp idea, and that seems to be the thing that everyone's saying is the silver lining of all this nonsense. Before we get into that, I want to explain why changing your braced pistol to an SBR is not a good idea. And then we'll get into myths. One is that it's going to be a free tax stamp for you. And two is that it's going to be filed within that 120 day grace period. Let's get into it. So first, and I'm not giving legal advice, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not telling you what to do or not do, but if you were to think that moving from braced pistol status to SBR status was a good idea, this might dissuade you from doing that and show you why it might not be as advantageous to do so. So with a braced pistol, it falls under the category of a pistol or handgun. So for state law, varying degrees of differences, but let's say you are in a state that has concealed carry law and in your state you are allowed to carry your handgun concealed and loaded in your vehicle, on your person, in a bag, etc. So if you have a truck gun, if it's a handgun, you can do all those things. If it is considered a rifle though, however, in your state, you may have a situation where you can't do that same thing with a long gun or a rifle. In the case of my state and many other states, if you have a long gun, any type of rifle that is in your vehicle, if you're transporting it to the range, it has to be unloaded. You have to have the magazine separated from that gun in a different locked compartment, and that ammunition cannot be accessible to the driver readily. So if you want to still use your, let's say, an AR pistol the same way as you would a handgun, you can no longer do that if you register it as an SBR because it is considered a rifle. Another con to registering it is that it is registered. If you don't have a handgun registry in your state, then no one knows that you have that handgun. But if you have to register it as an SBR, you have to include fingerprints, in some cases pictures. You would have to provide all sorts of information about your personal property to the government for no reason other than they think you should. And you can see why that might be problematic. <coughs> Confiscation. Then once it's registered, you now have to tell the ATF and get permission to cross state lines with your firearm. Because... Oh boy, a free tax stamp! Now let's get into the first myth. The first myth being that you are gonna get a free tax stamp. So you can take all of the AR pistols or other braced pistols and you can get those altered in SBRs and get even more rights removed from your legally owned personal property for free. Well, I hate to break it to you, but the ATF does not have authority to get rid of a tax. Only Congress has that authority. They obviously don't have the authority to do any of the things that they're listing or proposing in this ruling, but that for certain is not something that they have the authority to do so you're still gonna have to pay that $200 tax stamp regardless of what they say or tell you is going to happen. Guys, these government employers are totally gonna to get 40 million of us all registered and good to go in 120 days. That's a long time for them, right? Just to give you some context, I have personally gone through an e-file process with a suppressor and this is when e-file just came out. They told us, and by they, I mean the ATF told the American people that you are going to get your suppressor approved within 90 days. Current wait time for approval for suppressors is nine months. So if you're not sure whether or not the government might lie to you and overpromise, under deliver, you have a perfect recent example of that happening with suppressors. There's about eight people that are approving the form that is related to SBRs right now in the ATF, eight employees. There are roughly 40 million 
people in this country that have braced pistols of some kind, or at least own pistol braces. And that's just an estimation. It could be more than that. In order for those eight people to process all of the forms and approve them, even if it only took them one minute a piece to approve those as soon as they got them, they never took any breaks, they never took any vacations, they worked a full 40 hours a week, which we know in the government is probably not happening, it would take them 69 years to approve all of those forms. And obviously that is going well past the 120 days that you have for the amnesty to register your stuff as an SBR. So if I happen to be right about those two myths, or we'll just call them lies from the ATF, and you're not able to register it in time, you're not able to get out of the $200 tax stamp, it sounds like, according to the text, unless there's some type of exception that I don't understand, you're going to be a felon in the eyes of the ATF either way. But in this case, now you owe them another 200 bucks, and you have given them all the information that they need to incriminate you with. Am I missing something? Well, I don't want this all to be doom and gloom, so let's talk about some potential positives that could come out of this ultimately. One of the things could be that you see short barrel rifles and short barrel shotguns completely removed from the NFA altogether. And that could be with a combination of the SHORT Act, which if you're not familiar with that, that's a bill that's been introduced to remove those items from the NFA. But also it could ultimately come from a Supreme Court decision that would result in all of the lawsuits that are gonna be filed against the ATF in this matter. One of which is from the GOA. They knew that they were gonna be suing the ATF. They just had to wait for their final ruling to start the proceedings. So it's gonna be a long process, a long legal battle. Make sure that you're donating to those groups that are fighting for your rights and make sure that you're contacting your representatives and letting them know that you are adamantly against everything the ATF is trying to do here and remind them that Congress is the only body that can actually make laws. Lastly, I just want to remind everybody in this video of this disclaimer that I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. I'm not telling you or instructing you or recommending you do any of these things or not do any of these things that were discussed in the video. You're an adult, you're a free thinking American, and you can make your own decisions. Let's try to keep it that way. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay free. And God bless. Keeps you up at night, yeah Make all the demons quiet, yeah We were built to thrive, yeah I think that we've all had enough what Keeps you up at night, yeah Make all the demons quiet, yeah We were built to thrive, yeah